pre-calculus prerequisite chapter lesson 5 we're looking at four algebraic ways to solve a quadratic equation and this is the third of those four ways completing the square and really this is related to the first one we looked at factoring uh, if we can factor a quadratic it's very simple to solve the quadratic expression we simply put it in its factors and then we determine which uh, values would make each one of those factors zero with completing the square, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quadratic that's not factorable, something that doesn't factor easily, and we're going to turn it into something that does. And one of the easiest quadratics to factor is what we call a perfect square. A perfect square, you should remember, or I'll review it for you, is something that looks like this, x squared plus 4x plus 4. And when we look at this, we want to ask ourselves, is this a perfect square? When there's three things we want to look at that will make it a perfect square or will identify it as a perfect square if we know what to look for. Okay, so the first thing you want to look for is, is this first term a perfect square? Can I take the square root of this leading term and get an even term or an even number? And I can because the square root of x squared is x. x times x is x squared. Second thing I look for is the last term, the constant. Is that a perfect square? Can I take the square root of that and get one even number? And I can. The square root of 4 is 2. Okay. Now, the third thing I need to look for is if I take these two to multiply together and I double them, I'll get a number, 4x. If this doubled, if this value is exactly the same as this, then what we have here is a perfect square, which means we can factor it very quickly. So the way to factor a perfect square, once we have identified it as a perfect square, looking at those three things, then it's very easy to factor. I take the square root of this, which is x. I take the square root of this, which is 2. And I take this sign, whatever it is. If it's a plus, this will be a plus. If it's a minus, that will be a minus. And then I put parentheses on it, squared it. That's factored. What that means is x plus 2 times itself, x plus 2, will give me this quadratic right here, okay, because this is a perfect square. So what we're doing when we're completing the square, in this case here, we're taking a quadratic that's not factorable, and we're actually turning it into one of these, which is factorable, and very quickly factorable. Because once I have it here, then I can use extracting the square root. Let's say this is equal to 1. I can then use extracting the square roots that we learned in the other video to then simplify the quadratic equation. So we're taking something that's not a factorable quadratic, turning it into something that is. Okay, well then hopefully you're sitting there going, well, how do we do that? How do we turn something that's not factorable into something that is factorable? I'm glad you asked. Here's how you do it. The first thing you have to do is make sure that the leading coefficient is a 1. And if it's not, you're going to need to divide everything by that coefficient to make it a 1. In this case here, this was a 1. So if we needed to complete the square, we could go ahead and start from there. If it wasn't a 1, we would divide by that number, whatever it is, therefore making that a 1, and then we could go ahead and do the next thing. So once we have a coefficient of 1, we can then add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. And you remember, what does the b represent? The b represents this number right here from our standard form. It's this number that's in front of the x. So I take that number, whatever it is, whether it be a fraction, a decimal, a whole number, whatever it is, I take that number, I divide it by 2, or multiply it by half if, if it's a fraction, and then add that number to both sides. Once I've done that, I've created a perfect square on the left, and then I can simply factor that perfect square and then extract the square root. So let me do one example for you rather quickly here, and then we'll uh, show you, uh, and then uh, that will wrap this video up. And then I will do another video with two or three examples on it, one that has a fraction in it so you can kind of see how that works. So um, you can take a look at that. So the first thing we want to do when we're solving using this method is we want to take the constant and isolate it. So we move the constant over to the other side. It's over here on the right all by itself. I then need to check and make sure that the leading coefficient is a 1, which it is. Then I want to add b over 2 squared to both sides. So I need b, which in this case is negative 8, 
I need to divide it by 2 and square it. Okay, so negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. So this will always be adding to both sides, by the way. Meaning this will always be a plus because you're squaring a positive number here or a squaring a negative number, e number, and either way you're going to get a positive number. Once I have that, what I've created over here is a perfect square, which is very easy to factor. You take the square root of this, which is x. You take the square root of this, which is 4. And you take this sign, whatever it is, minus, squared, that's factored. And then I can simplify this side. Now I have it set up where I extract the square root by taking the square root of both sides, which gets rid of the squared over here. And remember, I took the square root, so it's plus or minus. The square root of 1 is 1. So then I have my two equations. x minus 4 is 1, or x minus 4 is negative 1, and I solve those. So x is going to be 5, or x is going to be uh, 3. So my two solutions are 5 and 3. Okay. So we solve the quadratic by completing the square. Whoops, let me go back here. So we take something that doesn't factor. If this 15 was over here, it wouldn't factor. And I create a perfect square, which does, and then I extract the square root. So hopefully that gives you the steps. You have those written down in your notes. You can follow those. You can check out the next video of examples. And again, I'll do two or three, one or two that involve fractions, so you can see how those work. Even if you're working with fractions, you can still do the same thing. Okay.